Today in the shop, we are looking at a 2019 Lincoln MKC with a blank touchscreen. The touchscreen on this vehicle just remains blank. We don't get any audio output or any voice prompts from the sync system. I'm going to be using 4Scan Lite on an iPhone along with an OBD Link MX Plus Bluetooth adapter today for diagnosis. And I'm going to start diagnosis by retrieving all the codes on this. And we don't have any continuous memory codes in the sync module. And nothing in the audio control module either. It doesn't really look like we have any codes that are relevant to the problems that we're having with this vehicle. So I think the next thing we're going to try is a module reset on the sync module or the APIM. And this basically just reboots the module. And that seems to have gotten our touchscreen and our audio system working. A few moments later. After a few minutes, this vehicle always goes back to a blank screen. If we do a module reset on the APIM or the sync module again, it will work for a while and then it will return to a blank screen again. I've reset the sync system multiple times. I've unhooked the battery cables and shorted them together. I've performed a master reset on this system. I've tried doing a hard reset. I've even tried updating the sync system several times. And given some time, it always returns to a blank screen. And I've never been able to get the voice prompts to work on the system. So at this point, I think we're going to condemn the sync module and go ahead and replace it. We have a brand new shiny remanufactured sync module from Ford or as Ford prefers to call it, an accessory protocol interface module because a module's not cool unless it has a really long acronym. We're gonna start replacement by removing the floor console front trim panel and that just snaps on. Next, we're gonna remove the bottom center stack panel by prying down on it, followed by the center dash grill cover and electrical connector. There are two screws on this that go in from the back side of the dash to retain the front control interface module, the bezel that runs all the way down the center stack of the dash. I believe these are 7mm screws. Both of those screws will have to be removed. Followed by two more 7mm screws at the top of the center stack that were previously covered by the grill cover. There are two electrical connectors that need to be unplugged at the base of the front control interface module. And at this point with the screws removed it's just retained by a series of clips around it. Once the front control interface module is free, we're still going to have several electrical connectors on the back of it that we're going to have to disconnect. Several of those go directly to the sync module or APIM. Once we have all the electrical connectors disconnected, we can flip the front control interface module over. And I usually go ahead and compare the new sync module with the old one just to make sure it has all the correct electrical connectors and everything looks right. There is one remaining video cable that goes between the sync module and the touchscreen that still needs to be removed. And then the sync module is just going to be attached with Phillips screws. One under the video cable and two more on the opposite end. I'll go ahead and get the video cable unplugged and then we'll go ahead and get the screws out of it. And we'll swap in the new module. I'll go ahead and install the screws and then connect the video cable. And at this point we're ready to start reassembling the dash. We'll go ahead and plug in all the connectors on the back of the sync module and the main connector on the back of the front control interface module. We'll go ahead and snap the bezel or the front control interface module onto the dash. I'll go ahead and install the two screws from the back side of the front control interface module at the bottom of the dash, followed by the two screws at the top of the bezel. I'll plug in the electrical connector on the speaker cover and then we'll go ahead and snap the speaker cover onto the dash. Install the two electrical connectors at the bottom, followed by the trim at the bottom center of the dash. Next, we'll go ahead and install the trim at the bottom of the center stack. We'll go ahead and turn on the ignition. We probably could do without the wipers. And we have a working touchscreen. We still need to configure our new sync module for this vehicle. You may have noticed when I turn the ignition switch on, we get the Ford logo in the touchscreen. And this is not a Ford, it's a Lincoln, so it should be displaying the Lincoln logo. So we're going to configure that and several other things with the Asbuilt data on this vehicle. And we're going to be using the Windows-based version of 4Scan to configure the Asbuilt data on this. Let's take a quick look at what we have for codes in our new sync module before we configure it. Asbuilt data is literally the configuration data for the module for as the vehicle is built, as it's equipped, what equipment it has, what options it has, things like satellite radio, which modules it has, how it talks to those modules, all this is going to be configured with Asbuilt data. And the reason why Ford sets modules up this way is because the same module may be used on half a dozen different models of vehicles, and all those vehicles may be equipped differently depending on how they're ordered. So we're going to ignore all these codes that are in our new sync module until after we've configured it. I've clicked on the configuration and programming icon in the left toolbar, and I'm going to go ahead and select APIM, module configuration, as built format. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK at the changing configuration may totally screw your car up message. 
This is the current ASBuilt data file that's in our new module we received from Ford. And I'm going to go ahead and put up an ASBuilt data file I downloaded from Ford on the right side of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and start changing the ASBuilt data that's in our module to match the file that I've downloaded. And until we actually click a write button, whether we just write an individual block or write the entire file, until we click the write button, we haven't actually changed anything in the module. And if you compare the checksums on these two files, and the checksum is the last two characters in each line. If you compare the checksums between what I've downloaded and what's actually in the module, we're going to have to change every line in this except for the very last two lines. I downloaded the ASBuild data file I'm using here today from Ford. You can also download it, I believe, from Motorcraft.com. Uh, other ways you can get it, you could have retrieved it from the module before we pulled the module from the vehicle, as long as it isn't corrupted or nobody's modified it. There is also a load factory ASBuild button on the Forescan screen where you can actually download the data from Ford and it'll go ahead and plug in all the numbers for you, which is probably the easiest way to do this, but I usually like to compare the files and make sure what's going into the module, so however you want to do it, any of these will get it done. I'm all done with the modifications to the ASBuild file, so I'm going to go ahead and click the Write All button, and that's going to write our file to our sync module. We've received a Blocks Program Successfully message, so I'm going to go ahead and cycle the key off and back on. And we're now getting the correct Lincoln logo in our touchscreen. The theme and everything looks correct on our touchscreen, so at this point I think we're going to jump back into Forescan and clear all the codes real quick and make sure none of them return. I'm going to go ahead and click the stop button on the bottom of the ASBuilt screen here, otherwise it won't let us clear the codes. We're going to clear all codes. I'm going to go ahead and check and make sure everything works properly on this. And then I'm going to go ahead and read DTCs one more time just to make sure none of the codes come back. And we're going to call this a win. If you found this helpful or interesting, please click the like button down below. i got a lot more great stuff coming up, so please subscribe. And as always, have a great week.